we will consider the last uh, part of our geometrical uh, lectures uh, before we move to the theory of functions. We um, describe the another model for geometries which we investigated. Um, <clears throat> initially, all our construction was done in the upper half plane, and that upper half plane was uh, a universal model which act well both for the elliptic, hyperbolic, and parabolic. Geometries, so SL to R transitively act on the upper half plane and make, if we just a cube upper half plane with corresponding structure of hypercomplex numbers, we can describe uh, respective geometry in natural way. Uh, it is also known from complex analysis what we may deal with uh, geometry of the upper half plane or Lobachevsky geometry if to, uh, we make a transformation to Poincaré disk. Poincaré disk is obtained uh, from upper half plane in complex analysis by means of linear fractional transformation, uh, which is known as Kelly transform. And here we have <coughs> the presentation of that uh, transformation uh, with, which use complex numbers. So um, structure of Kelly transformation is as follow. We build two times two matrices which employ this hypercomplex unit uh, I square root to minus one. And then we make a transformation of the SL to R matrices to another form which is known as <coughs> SU11. So this is a matrices two times two with complex entries and which has the following structure. So we have uh, co two complex numbers alpha and beta when matrix is alpha beta bar beta alpha bar <coughs> where uh, we again obtain the property what determinant of this matrix is equal to one. Determinant of this matrix is equal to modulus alpha squared minus modulus beta squared. Uh, so that shall be equal to one. For such a matrix in complex analysis used a decomposition <coughs> decomposition uh, which uh, is uh, given on this slide. Uh, so essentially we represent uh, here a matrix as a product of two matrices. One contains a complex number uh, which is uh, given by the expression beta divided by alpha bar uh, divided by alpha bar and out of um, value of determinant we uh, may see what modulus of alpha is bigger than modulus of beta so modulus of u is less than one when from that formula follow what modulus of u is less than one so uh, that uh, two times two matrix uh, which we are considering is parameterized by one complex number which belongs to the unit disk. And then uh, we multiply this matrix by a diagonal matrix. That diagonal matrix is the image of subgroup K, so subgroup uh, consisting of matrices cosine, sine, minus sine, cosine, uh, under the Kelly transform. So one of the advantages of Kelly transform uh, is what it is diagonalizing uh, action of the group which we use to build corresponding homogeneous space. I recall what uh, for complex uh, geometry we obtain uh, the corresponding homogeneous space uh, when we factorize SL to R with respect to subgroup K. So that subgroup K uh, in Kelly transform became a diagonal subgroup and that much simplify its <coughs> action. So if we will come back to the initial geometries uh, on the upper half plane, 
when uh, the diagonal matrices were belong to subgroup A, and this act by the scaling of the upper half plane, uh, when subgroup N act by means of parallel shifts, and when subgroup K in the upper half plane act by such uh, hyperbolic rotation in the Lobachevsky uh, upper half plane. When we are doing the <coughs> Uh, Kelly transform, then uh, corresponding group actions uh, you can cons uh, compare at the uh, three pictures on the presentation. So the colors are preserved, so it makes uh, easier comparison of uh, what happened here. So, uh, here in, uh, we, uh, so under Kelly transform, the Infinity from to the point of And when scaling, which we have on the upper plane, which consists of orbits uh, ranging from uh, 0 to infinity, a point, they become doing the point minus pi and pi on the uh, unit disk. So it is not the uh, picture here. Then uh, orbit of uh, subgroup N, which was parallel aligned in the upper half plane, this is parallel line are all intersecting, intersecting at infinity. So this is the middle picture of the presentation. Uh, orbits in these uh, circles, which are touching the unit this at point I. So this is orbits of parallel shifts under such a transformation. And finally, uh, for subgroup E, we have here the bulk rotations in the upper part plane, and by diagonalization in the unities, that is the usual uh, ordinary Euclidean rotation around the origin. The origin uh, under Kelly transform is the image of the imaginary unit pi. The visual unit I on the Kelly transform down to the zero and the circle orbits around that point again concentric circle. So this is a pictures which are known from complex analysis <coughs> and we want to expand the construction from the uh, typical uh, situation of complex analysis to uh, something which we um, may apply to Double numbers as well. The uh, difficulty here, or well, the change here, is uh, uh, because, uh, yes, because Kelly transform itself employs imaginary unit pi. So, matrix of the Kelly transform contains the uh, imaginary unit, so it is complex number. Uh, we may suspect what if we are uh, willing to make a similar transformation with dual double numbers. Make some similar, we need to have similar matrices for the corresponding hypothetical unit. So, indeed, we may uh, do such transformation with the uh, here it's uh, in the uh, double numbers, uh, it's still, I do know that we uh, need here on this line by I. So here, uh, transformation needs to be uh, generate. We need to change the sign in the Kelly transform because now I squared is equal to 1, so the determinant of this matrix is not 0. It's if we put a matrix of the form 1 I minus I1. Hmm. And then transformation uh, again, you can compare with the initial images in the upper half plane. So, uh, the action of subgroup A, uh, it's again, well, as the Kelly transform, we still have what zero is passing to the point minus i, uh, infinity comes to the point i, and point i comes to the zero. So, all properties uh, which we had before. Uh, for transformation, good property 
are preserved here. So orbits of the group A, which was straight lines passing from zero to infinity, so here became arcs of hyperbolas. So here we are shown with arc of hyperbolas, and they are uh, sometimes coming uh, rather straightforwardly from the image of zero to the image of infinity, but sometimes the transformation is not so uh, well uh, as for other arc of hyperbolas. Where path is uh, rather different. <laughs> Similarly, uh, parallel lines for subgroup N, for the source of group N, parallel lines now transform it again to some parts of the uh, Kerbalas, uh, which again uh, all bearing uh, a point at infinity. So the uh, arcs of the Kerbalas are passing uh, the point pi on the and transformation <laughs> related to subgroup K also affects that um, transformation in the upper part K was on this side, or this was hyperbolas. So they are uh, transforming to corresponding hyperbolas here uh, as well. <coughs> uh, actually, um, what uh, 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 as you can already notice, the image uh, which we obtain on the Kerry transform here is not universal. Uh, previously, upper part plane uh, served well on three cases, elliptic, hyperbolic, and parabolic. But now, uh, what we will call the unities is uh, essentially different from the type of geometry. Previously, unit this uh, was uh, really the uh, is bounded by a circle. Now that is a part of the plane which is bounded by hyperbolas. And uh, there, are, uh, there are something um, completely different uh, which uh, appears in this hyperbolic case which make it different from the uh, subgroup uh, A and the complex numbers. First of all, uh, when we are made into the composition of our matrix in a similar way as we did before, so we have obtained here a matrix of the structure where A, B, minus B, and A again uh, are entries in the uh, algebra. They are not real anymore. They are element of the algebra of uh, double numbers. And when we are made into the composition, similar to previous decomposition numbers, so actually uh, here is a certain uh, addition. I did not cover earlier, uh, we need it for now. Uh, when we are discussing the transformations uh, of the uh, double numbers, then uh, upper half plane by uh, transformation is not an invariant object, really. So upper half plane is preserved only by new transformation. Uh, which uh, has uh, complex or dual number, double number. That even may be seen from the uh, three dimensional model which we discussed before. Uh, because if we are detecting uh, our cone by plane which is horizontal, or which is parallel to generator of the cone, then rotation of the cone will not leave the upper part plane, uh, so that is part of the plane, so rotation will be over. But if our section is done by the vertical plane, then rotating our cone around, we eventually come to the situation where from the cone the lower half plane on the picture, rotation will be done with, uh, by intersecting the 
crater, which is a big copper top plane. So, here is when we uh, uh, this calculation uh, which was um, admitted before, we can uh, move from upper top plane to the lower top plane. <coughs> So uh, that is a really an uh, interesting part, which has several, several different interpretations or so different consequences. So in terms of geometry, so what we have here, upper top plane with double numbers is not invariant anymore, and uh, that unit disk is not invariant anymore. We cannot <coughs> uh, leave the Within, uh, only in inner part of the unit disk, so we do to the outer part as well. Uh, in terms of analysis, uh, complex analysis, uh, the important uh, consequence of the composition of unit uh, circles with the plane in the inner and outer part is what we can decompose uh, uh, functions, helpful functions on the boundary of uh, the unit circle. Into uh, sum of two functions, one has analytic extension inside the unit circle, and another has an analytic extension outside the unit circle. So that is the composition in the hard space and complement of the hard space, which we uh, discussed in the second uh, part of our course uh, related to functional spaces. And finally, uh, there is even physical that uh, uh, non invariants on the upper top plane, um, which may be uh, discussed as follows. Uh, so, uh, we already mentioned on many occasions what double numbers uh, present uh, a good model in the good group for geometry of the space time. So, we already said uh, on several occasions what event we have. Our pictures uh, with double numbers when there is selected object which is known as a light form, which separate our space time uh, continuum into space like and time like region. And that uh, the composition is related to the casual uh, structure of the universe. So uh, when we uh, make time like region, then there is a half of it which may be associated with the future, and another opposite one uh, may be associated with the past. And physical properties of future and the past are essentially different. We may have a knowledge about the past, but we are cannot affect it anymore. So it's beyond our control. Uh, future, on the other hand, has completely opposite properties. We do not have a knowledge about future, so future may happen in different ways. But we possibly, or we believe at least, that we can affect what happened in the future. Of free will. So that is uh, same what in terms of physics, future and the past shall be uh, separated. So their physical properties are different, so all physical models shall be <coughs> different. But what happens when we are missing half and all of our plane with double numbers? Actually, under the same transformation, uh, future is transformed into past. And vice versa. So I have here some pictures, uh, some slides. So there is a continuous group of transformation. Here there is just six snapshots from that uh, transformation. So we have here just one half of the light cone, so say it's future. And then there is a continuous group of transformation which uh, transform that uh, future part of the light form uh, to the 
it's over the first part of the life form. So uh, a certain group of transformation can continuously make that uh, change. So here uh, there is some illustration. Now it is present <coughs> both parts of the light form, but only uh, given as uh, the inner part of the unit circle. So both red uh, hyperbola here is uh, indicate unit hyperbola. So let's see in the moment how that uh, inner part of the hyperbola can be converted into outer part of the hyperbola. So here is the transformation. So it's two round, uh, so let's stop in the middle. So you uh, see uh, these transformations uh, happen what <coughs> the uh, inner part of hyperbola which was initially inside the red one now uh, appears outside and then in the second part of the movie they come from outside to inside again. So this is my transformation and uh, again today you may have an impression what uh, points under such transformation somehow cross the boundary. So that uh, a point on the red hyperbola where all hyperbola passing through, it looks like uh, every point is just squeezing through the red hyperbola through, such, uh, through the boundary. But this is not true if you will watch uh, individual points, what is dynamic of individual points, what happened, that point uh, never cross the hyperbola. Maybe hyperbola. And you take one point inside and watch uh, its orbit. Its orbit will be going to infinity. It's not going to the boundary, so it's going to infinity. <coughs> and then crossing the uh, light form at infinity, so maybe this picture with compactification will definitely understand what happened. So uh, when we are moving to infinity, we are jumping from inner part to outer part at that uh, light form at infinity, not from the finite boundary which we see here. So this is how the transformation works. And that uh, present really a problem, and we are not the first people who met that problem. Uh, there is interesting story, uh, story behind it. So you may be aware of the so-called um, redshift effect. So the physics uh, tell us that when we are looking for spectral lines of certain chemical uh, elements like hydrogen or oxygen, which are both present at our uh, Earth and on some uh, stars. Then we compare spectral lines, which are rather sharp objects. So when we compare spectral lines of hydrogen atoms, say, um, on the Earth, and see what happened with, with spectral lines on the Earth, uh, we can see what frequencies of these uh, spectral lines are moving toward uh, the red part of the spectrum. And there is a common explanation uh, among astronomers what uh, the reason of such a redshift. The typical <coughs> picture is telling what our universe is expanding all objects are flying far uh, each from other, so then there is a certain wave coming from a star to the Earth, then due to this movement there is Doppler effect, and then as uh, the frequency uh, of uh, that uh, wave uh, change towards the red one, because objects in the universe flying apart. So this is a very common uh, explanation, and if you will come to the media, you will probably 
or this version, but um, experimental check auto rate calculations uh, would happen there shows what there is a certain disagreement with figures. Uh, so distances to the uh, stars which we need to be true are disagreed with the speed uh, of uh, objects which we calculate from the uh, redshift. Uh, and uh, that problem uh, was uh, addressed by uh, physicist mathematician Irvin Siegel, a very famous person in the mathematical physics, uh, who contributed a lot to the theory of system algebras, for example, uh, the basic result which is known as Gilpont uh, Neymar Siegel construction, which is named. So Siegel, Irving Siegel addressed that problem and he finds what it will be a much more accurate description of the redshift if we will accept the uh, postulate uh, not on expanding universe, but rather what our universe is uh, conformal. It, it is invariant under a wider group of concerns. Special relativity tells us what the law of physics shall be preserved by Lorentz transformations, uh, and that produces a geometry of the uh, same time. But if, on top of Lorentz transformation, we will add inversion, then we greatly expand our group, uh, and then it will be really much closer to what we are studying as Mendel transformation in the case of R here. So, uh, <coughs> Initial, uh, initial Lorentz transformation can be compared to the high transformation in the geometry when you have shifts and steering, and after you add to shift and steering inversion, you will get a Mendes transformation in complex number. Uh, addition of inversion to the Minkowski uh, geometry produce uh, that kind of uh, conformal geometry which we consider in our form. So, uh, given such an assumption, uh, what uh, all physics have been very under that additional inversion, uh, Irving Seagal was able to uh, get much more accurate uh, description of the measurements which are done for the uh, redshift observation. Uh, so, a great uh, amount of data is in agreement with this uh, additional symmetry. But because Ian Siegel is not an astronomer, astronomer ignored his book. He published a book in 1972, and he continues for the next 25 years to publish additional papers with more verification, more additions to his uh, construction. Yet, um, astronomers are ignoring that result and continue to speak about Doppler effect. And even in Wikipedia, you will not find any mention about that. So, uh, coming back to our situation. So, when uh, Irving Siegel did a postulate what we need to uh, hit invariance on the additional transformation, that inversion, but inversion, this is that, uh, what we see uh, now. So, this is an inversion which sends the inner part of the uh, hyperbola unit hyperbola to outer part. And this is exactly the same transformation which uh, on previous slide reverse the direction of time. It slows the up, uh, past and future. That is not physical, and Irving Siegel wants to avoid that, obviously. And when uh, he proposed what, uh, uh, a solution which we are presenting now, so uh, what Instead of considering just one copy of our space-time, we are considering two copies which are glued in a very special way. So here you have a um, square A, C, A dash, C double dash. So this is one copy of our plane. And there is a second square uh, which is A dash, C dash, A double dash, C double dash. <coughs> This is the second copy of uh, 
uh, our uh, space time, and we are viewing these two copies of space time over the light point at infinity. So, and we are what will be the result? So, that essentially, on this picture, what needs to be done? All letters, each the same letter, regarding with the number of dashes attached to them, shall be identified. And if a certain uh, part uh, segment joining, say, A dash and C dash, that shall be identified with a uh, <coughs> segment which join. Uh, no, uh, we have some intermediate points, so we need to make uh, an identification. So A and E double dash shall be identified with A prime, E prime. So uh, that segment shall be used in this way. What we will uh, obtain when we make such an identification is known as topological object cross -cut. So this is, again, this is topological structure. It's somehow in the same family as Lebel Street or Kiri Boku. Uh, if you will look uh, to the political objects, you will find it together, so it's quite interesting <coughs> uh, uh, thing. And essentially, what happened here, what this is a uh, new possibility uh, just to double power of a uh, single uh, side uh, uh, surface. So if you uh, come back to the Mobius Street, what happened uh, was uh, traveling across the Mobius Street, you came to the uh, same point on the opposite side. So this is why it's called uh, one side uh, surface. So normal to the points will be reverted. And then you just make cover the Mobius Street by double layer, which will avoid such uh, situation. Here is again double layer cover uh, for our uh, space time. And then we have uh, an upper half plane in one space time. We consider a union of upper half plane. Right on infinity, it's appear on the second shift of our double power, and it will be uh, corresponding to the world. So, even if we'll do such. And which is alpha, which is remain white. So we still have that decomposition, but boundary is now is doubled. We have two copies of the real axis which separate the bluish uh, region from white one. Uh, and similar after Kelly transform, uh, our Kelly transform down here. So you may see on the right hand side picture. So again, this. Uh, uh, in this situation, we do it together in a part given by the uh, unit hyperbola and outer part, uh, which will be on the other side. So if we will glue this together, then that will be again conformally invariant object, which split uh, double power into two. Uh, Right one, which is inner and outer part. Intercepted. 
built from uh, from four million billion models, uh, that will cover for our space. That really helped to resolve all key aspects of uh, that picture, uh, that situation which we say before uh, we geometrically separate two distinct they split analytic functions. Uh, functions uh, can be split into analytic and anti-analytic part. And we may uh, separate future and the past. Then we do a transformation which needs uh, uh, transform future uh, uh, into past. Uh, that happened for the second copy of our universe. The second copy of our universe is necessary somehow to make a balance. Uh, similar transformation can be done, uh, any transformation can be done if we return to because this uh, situation uh, imaginary number square with imaginary unit square to zero uh, we in fact has a possibility to assign a plus or minus sign uh, to Entry in our matrix. In either case, it will be non degenerate our matrix. And so we can do a transformation which is similar to the uh, transform of complex into numbers. And if you will compare uh, what happened with plus and minus sign, uh, then you will see what it is really. Rather cool to what we seen before. So, in parabolic situation, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, we really have a wider choice of possibilities. a parabolic situation with elliptic flavor, with the upper row here in pictures, like more like a circles, uh, with uh, part of the but if we give a hyperbolic flavor, so it's uh, like more like a hyperbolic situation. I do the colors. The subgroup A. That uh, diagram. Or orbits become group N for lines um, in the concentric parabolas here. And then uh, subgroup K here again produce certain collection of parabolas from this one here. Uh, So uh, the common feature of the uh, transform in a uh, free situation in the elliptic parabolic and hyperbolic one, but uh, in uh, this free situation we have three subgroups uh, which fix imaginary unit with the subgroup P and prime and A prime. And corresponding Kelly transform diagonalizes exactly the same subgroup which fits uh, the imaginary transform diagonalized subgroup K. The parabolic Kelly transform diagonalizes the subgroup and sign, and uh, hyperbolic Kelly transform diagonalizes the subgroup K sign. <coughs> so probably. Now the time to put both pictures on the same uh, table. 
So you can see here is a gradual transformation. Uh, we start first with the first row with catalytic transformation, when second row shows parabolic transformation with elliptic flavor. Then Then down uh, we obtain the hyperbolic version of uh, uh, hyperbolic flavor of parabolic teletransform, which concluded by teletransform. So that uh, um, transformation and the unit disk, which we have in few geometries. They are not universal, apart of them universal, uh, these are specific, and still for these different uh, geometrical objects with different images, we still have uh, that uh, representation, which I mentioned before, so you can see that we have uh, diagonalization of uh, the uh, rotations. And then different version of the, uh, the subgroup N uh, happened here uh, with different diagonalization. Lower triangular magnitude. And it is interesting here um, to observe what orbits which we have here for the they are transformed to concentric parabola. Concentric in our definition. So that is the end of our geometry section, and we now uh, make uh, of second part of the course, which is related to the uh, action of uh, R in the space of function. So uh, the reason why we may be interested in such a transformation is because and the interaction of the set of R on the set of function can be uh, dealing with the uh, linear transformation when in our disposal is uh, the rich set of analogy. And that uh, allows but it will be
uh, web construction, which we will uh, speak about, is still connected to the <coughs> part of In fact, we will be <coughs> hearing the similar transformations which are made by means of induction. Multi induction procedure, and that multi induction procedure is uh, connected with the geometry. So, uh, when we consider geometry, we pick up our group G, and the total group H, we build a homogeneous thing. When we consider it the action, this leads us to the modulus transformation on this. But when we are factorizing with respect to that subgroup H, essentially information related to subgroup H is not. In this case, you have H. And a linear transformation, which we will do by induction, But what will happen in the homogeneous phase, P over H uh, will be <coughs> uh, treated as uh, the domain of our function and the H itself will come to the range. So essentially, in some formal sense, can be taken as a product of the homogeneous space, G over H, and H itself. So that part, homogeneous space, will be the main. Functions and subgroup H, which was previously lost, we uh, didn't have it. Now, add the range well, let's additional freedom when our function decides being defined in geometric geometry in range as well, all together will produce the linear consolidation and the inductive uh, representation and representation, so which we will investigate in all uh, again elliptic parameters.